Hello, hello everyone. I hope you are all having an absolutely wonderful day. It is already time to do my June roundup. <laughs> June flew by. I did a lot of traveling in June, so yeah, June just went by so so fast. Tell me if June was the same for you. So in these roundup videos, I like to structure mine the same way that Julia Adams structures hers. I'm gonna make sure and link her channel because I totally, like I said, structuring this like she does. I'm gonna go through the products that I am ready to review uh, in the order of loves and then likes and then kind of dislikes in those three categories. And I do like to say not all these products are products that came into my collection recently. These are just products that I am ready to review now. Although I think looking at all the products I have to talk about, these are all new products to my collection. <laughs> these are all things that came in relatively recently. So before I get started, I have to tell you what I'm drinking today. I'm drinking a matcha latte from this brand called Jade Leaf. My sister-in-law gave me this little packet of matcha because it came already sweetened and that's not what she was looking for. I really like it. I think it's really good. There's the, all the ingredients are in, in here are matcha and um, cane sugar. It's quite delicious. Okay, let's start with some products that I absolutely have been loving. Oh my goodness, let's start with the highlighter I'm actually wearing today. So this has been getting a lot of hype all over, I feel like, and it is the liquid highlighter from Flower Beauty. It does really seem like they have made this specifically to be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury one. I do not have that one, but just from what I have seen, the packaging is exactly the same. It has the little sponge on the end. You twist it and uh, to open it or close it. And the shades appear to be exactly similar from what I can tell from swatches online. I have to tell you, really, really easy to use. When you first put it on, it looks kind of wild, like, Ooh, but as soon as you blend it out, it melts right into your cheeks and it's really beautiful. And this is a type of formula too that sets down right away. Um, I was thinking maybe I should swatch it for you. I don't know if I need to because it is on my face, but <laughs> I'll just swatch it for you anyway. Okay, so that's what it looks like when it's not blended out. So I'm sitting in front of a window, so everything looks, you know, extra reflective here where I'm sitting. But just look at that beautiful shine. I have the shade Opal, but when you do, when you blend it out, you can make it look not quite not quite so so crazy. That's still looking pretty wild there. <laughs> but trust me, if you just use a little bit, blend it out, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm really really happy to have this in my collection. No glitter, by the way, no glitter. Let's move on to a cream blush that I have been loving. Oh, I'm also wearing this today. So this is from Cure Weiss. I have it in this little makeup geek packaging. Happily, you can purchase Cure Weiss cream blush singles in refills so you don't have to buy the really gorgeous but really really high-end expensive packaging that makes the blush a little bit more inexpensive especially if you bought on sale like i did <laughs> anyway this is the shade inner glow and this is what i have just kind of on the apples of my cheeks today it is kind of an understated color but it's very very different from anything i have in my collection it almost comes off bronzery-ish on my cheeks and it does have a little bit of a slight glow to it but nothing super highlightery and like i said i've got it focused right here and i think it is one of the most beautiful and nuanced shades i have ever tried i am absolutely delighted with it the formula again melts right into your cheeks and even though it does have a little bit of a glow there's no shimmer or anything sitting in my uh pores which is a good thing so it's not super super shimmery it's just very very unique to my collection which is what i was hoping when buying something so high end so very very pleased with this something else that i'm wearing today that ended up in my loves list is this mascara so this is the mascara from cali ray i just part, uh, purchased the mini and the reason why i was so interested in this is because it's supposed to to be a tubing mascara but putting it on just look what it does for my lashes I got lots and lots of length lots and lots of volume it's absolutely a glorious mascara at least for like my style of lashes I guess I mean everyone has a different preference for what they like this is exactly what I like in a mascara as far as the tubing part goes it is a tubing mascara so if you've never tried a tubing mascara before it, it like coats your lashes and creates like a tube around each lash that comes apart supposed to be easily <laughs> in warm water. I say supposed to be easily because I feel like even though this is a tubing mascara and it does come off with warm water, I feel like it takes more effort 
then I remember other tubing mascaras I've tried to get off. I felt like I just sat there for a long time put, running warm water over my eyes and gently rubbing before it finally started to come off. I felt like this was like super glued on. I did eventually get it off just like with the warm water method. It just required more rubbing of my eyes than I expected for a tubing mascara. It won't stop me from wearing it, however, because <laughs> I really, really like it. So this was a delightful little splurge purchase that I made. I have another highlighter in my loves list, and this one is totally different than that one from Flower Beauty. For one thing, it is a powder, and it's a powder duo. So this is from Laura Geller. This is the Baked Original Highlighter Duo in French Poodle and French Almond. So these are very like low intensity highlighters. These are what you want to wear when you really want to make sure <laughs> that you don't have too much shininess going on in your face. So this is French Poodle that I'm blending out on my hand right now. Look at the beautiful shine. This is a type of formula that doesn't have any like any sort of glitter particles. And like that one's kind of peachy and I feel like it actually blends in really well with my skin tone to give just a very subtle sheen. I think these are beautiful. I think they lay on the skin nicely. They don't look like they lay on top of the skin. They blend right in and I'm really, really happy I tried this. This is like a formula that I hear people rave about from time to time, but Laura Geller isn't a brand that I don't think you can get it at Ulta. I purchased mine during a FabFitFun sale. So just because it's not as easy to get, I suppose. I haven't really tried anything from the brand, but this was a really, really good introduction. I think it's beautiful, and now I'm really interested in the Laura Geller blushes, which are the things I usually hear mentioned. <laughs> Everyone loves those things, and I have yet to try one, but they're on my radar now. Something else that I really loved is I tried a Lisa Eldridge lipstick. So this is my very first lipstick from her. This is from the Sheer Lipstick line, and I have the shade Painterly. This shade is... Let's see, it's got enough brown in it so that it works for me, but it's definitely also got like mauve tones to it. I have a picture of myself wearing it. I will put it up for you. I like that it's lightweight. I like that it's more on the sheer side. I don't like a really thick lipstick with a lot of pigment. Uh, I, I like the lipsticks to be very thin and lightweight and this checks that box for me and the packaging is really pretty and like uh, not pretty well okay it's pretty I was about to say pleasing though look oh <laughs> it's so fun I just wish since these are so expensive and luxe that I could buy refills it would be really nice at least I don't think you can that would be great if that's something that she would come out with in the future all right one more thing on my loves list uh from Bodyography. So I purchased two shades of the um, glitter pigments. I have Celestial and I have Off the Hook. This is exactly the type, <laughs> exactly the type of glitter I like to wear in my eyes usually. Like it's that sort of micro sparkle that makes your eyelids look super white, so, not white, super wet. So this one here that I'm swatching first, this is the shade Celestial and this is the one that I especially fell in love with. It's kind of got a light brown base to it with golden sparkles and oh so flattering, absolutely gorgeous. I bought mine on sale. These do go on sale from time to time and let me quick swatch this other one for you. This is the shade Off the Hook. One thing I noticed about these is that they stayed in my eyes which I was so so excited about so many times. Sometimes these ultra sparkly type products fall out really terribly all over my face. These ones didn't. So this is off the hook. It has more of that cool taupey undertone, but the sparkle is just absolutely lovely. It has more, I would say it has both cool and warm sparkles. In fact, both of them do. Both have cool and warm sparkles in them. Oh, they're just beautiful. Great one and done. I'm so glad I finally tried these. These have been on my to try list for like three years. <laughs> I finally tried some. Really, really love them. I'm so happy. Okay, now let's move on to the likes category. Things that I like but didn't quite hit the mark of love. So that, uh, the sunscreen from Tula. So this is the Protect and Glow Daily Sunscreen Gel. As the name would suggest, this is a really, really, really glowy sunscreen. Like more glowy than I would ever want in the summertime. But I know a lot of people love a glowy primer to... Uh, give them that dewy skin look in the summertime, especially this would be an amazing product to wear under your makeup. I did wear it under makeup. It looked really, really pretty. It didn't cause any pilling. It worked nicely with all the products that I used and I thought it worked out well. It's just 
really glowy <laughs> for my taste. I probably be wearing this personally in the winter rather than the summer. I thought that the texture of it was kind of weird. Let me see if I can get some. So it comes out in this little squeezy tube. Yeah, and you, can you see that it's kind of um, curdly looking? Like at first I was like, did I get a bad tube? <laughs> it's just odd, but when you blend it out, it, you know, turns sheer and that curdly effect kind of goes away but it was it's just odd at first but you can see oh, very very glowy wrist now <laughs> it does have a sunscreen scent by the way so just because it's so glowy this didn't make it into my loves something that I really really expected to love but surprisingly didn't was this one from Lorac. So this is the new unzipped palette, the Unzipped Amour. So this is what the color story looks like. And I did a whole video, three looks, uh, and um, reviewing this palette. My main issue with this is the mattes, or are the mattes. The mattes actually lack pigment, <laughs> which is so surprising. The other unzipped palette I have has a lot of pigment. That's not a problem that I've experienced before with Lorac. Um, when using all of, okay, except for this like more plummy shade over here, but the rest of the mattes I had to build up, which I don't usually do. I like a more light wash of eyeshadow color. So for me to have to build it up, that, you know, that tells you that they are really struggling with the pigment. But overall, I did like the looks that I can create with this. That's why this is in the likes category versus the dislikes category. But I did have a comment from a subscriber saying that hers was in such bad like just really really bad quality that she had to return hers and then I saw Jen Phelps review it and she didn't mention anything about the lack of pigmentation in the mattes in fact she said the, the mattes in her palette were good and pigmented so it just makes me think that there's some quality issues going on with this palette so I can't full-on recommend it knowing that you never know what you're quite gonna get you know what I mean so like it for myself but I don't love it I tried a cream eyeshadow from Cure Weiss I have the shade ember and you guys i tried this and then get ready with me it was so 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 pretty but i did mention in that video that i thought like it probably would crease and it did and that's why it's in the likes category versus the loves category in fact i have been wearing this um aside from that other time like i've been wearing it more trying to figure out how i can keep it from creasing it's just a beautiful taupey shade and all of my tricks have not been working. Like this is just a super melty eyeshadow, which is why it looks so beautiful. So beautiful on your eyelid. It creates just the most beautiful, hydrated, luminous look. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I loved it, but it creases so badly on me. So if you're someone who doesn't normally deal with creasing just because of your eye shape or whatever, I would 100% recommend this. However, if you're someone who really doesn't like creasing and it's something that happens to you quite often, I don't know if I would recommend it. For myself personally, I normally detest creasing. I do what I can to avoid it, but the effect of this shadow is so pretty. I'm going to continue to wear it. <laughs> That's just the reality of it. I might even pick up more shades. I can't believe I'm saying that, because usually if something creases on me, it's like out the door. I don't want it, but this is so pretty. I might put up with it. Something else in my lax likes category. So from e.l.f. I was really expecting this to be a love for me, but this is the glossy lip stain from e.l.f. I have the shade Basic Beige. It's very, very pretty. I really enjoy the color. That's what it looks like right there. The only reason I do not have this in my loves category is I have noticed that if you're not careful uh, with this product, it's easy to get lip puddles you know what I'm talking about <laughs> where it starts to gather at like the bottom of your lip here or in like the corners over here like if you just put too much on it might look okay at first but it might gather in those areas in fact I think I have a picture of myself I was taking a selfie of something else and I happened to be wearing this and later I realized that oh great I've got lip puddles going on so if I can find that photo I'm gonna put it up for you to show you what I'm talking about it can be avoided just by making sure not to put on too much product I think that is the problem that I I had that day but just because it can be a little bit finicky that way this ended up in my likes category versus the loves category but once the glossiness wears off it does leave a nice uh, stain on your lips like nothing liquid lipstick or anything that will dry your lips out just a really nice sheer wash of color so I like this type of product in general I got this as a free gift with purchase so this is actually from Clinique this is the quick liner for eyes intense in the shade intense ebony this is a super creamy super super creamy eyeliner 
It kind of reminds me of how creamy and glidey the ones from Urban Decay are. And I think I actually like this one more than my Urban Decay one because this one did not transfer. I used this just to tight line on my upper lashes and it didn't transfer to my lower lash line like the one from Urban Decay does. So I still like the one from Urban Decay, but I think this one's actually a little bit better. It's not in my loves loves list just because, I don't know, it didn't do that extra thing for me that would put it into the loves list, I guess. But I think it's a nice, super, super creamy black eyeliner. It is one that is super easy to smudge out. Like if you're the type of person who likes to put it there and then use a, your finger or a brush to kind of smudge it out. This is a type of super creamy formula that you can do that with. I told you I had a lot of products to talk about this time. <laughs> only a few products left. So also in the likes category, so I tried a little mini from Ilia. This is the Balmy Gloss Tinted Lip Oil. I have the shade Only You. So I like this, but again, I just wasn't blown away by it. Maybe it's just the shade. Uh, it's just kind of a more light pink color and I don't really go for that color quite often. But the texture of it is more, I would say, on the lip oil side versus the liquid lip balm side, which is what I prefer. So I think that's also a reason why this ended up in the like category versus the love category. I will happily use it, but it wasn't a formula that blew my socks off. Okay, I have two active dislikes <laughs> this month. One was a sunscreen. So this is from Cetaphil. This is their Sun 50 Sheer Mineral Sunscreen. So actually, um, I guess in one way you could say it worked out well for me because it didn't make my skin break out and it worked well under makeup. It's also nice and matte, which I have been having a hard time finding matte sunscreens that work well under makeup. It has been a problem for me. <laughs> if you have a suggestion, please leave it down below. My problem with this one is the intense white cast. <laughs> it's so bad. And in fact, I found myself spending extra time with my foundation to make sure that I had covered any sunscreen that had gotten up into my hairline. Like this is the type of thing that is so, so white casty that I feel like I actually use more makeup to cover it. This is the type of thing I wouldn't want to put on my ears if I was also wearing my makeup. I would have to like put makeup all over my ears and down my neck <laughs> to cover this. So I'm not sure who's wearing these white casty sunscreens anymore. In any case, it's not for me. I don't know who I can find to give this to. I'll ask around. I'll ask around and see. But there were some good things about it, but it's just not a formula that I will be reaching for. Something else that was disappointing was this Shadow Blocks from Maybelline. So I bought this specifically to review. I was really hoping to I have a good review for it. It reminded me a lot of those Kaja duos. It's one of those little stacks where you have a little shadow. But the problem was a severe lack of pigmentation. <laughs> this uh, bone colored shade here on top is uh, almost useless. You can kind of see it there. This middle shade actually was quite nice. This is more of like a satin um, metallic formula. And it's a type of formula that I actually really, really like on my eyelids because it doesn't um, highlight any texture and that color is really pretty. Oh, I didn't say what shade I have. I have the shade 82nd and Park Avenue. Mainly, I think I could have dealt with, you know, the cruddy bone colored shade and that nice middle shade if this, <laughs> the bottom shade had any pigment to it. So I had to build this up and build this up and build this up. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what it looks like. And you'd think looking at it in the pan that you'd be able to get it nice and deep, but that's about as deep as I could get it on my eyes. This is another one I did a video review on. I can link that down down below if I um, remember to do so. So sadly, this is going to be pretty much an immediate declutter for me. Not something I want to keep. Wow, I made it through that. Thank you you guys so much. If you are still here, thank you so much for watching the entire video. If you have tried any of these products, I am very interested in your review. Please make sure and leave it down below so that we all can benefit from your experiences as well. Thank you guys so much for all of your support on my channel. I really, really do appreciate it. I will see you very, very soon in the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.